Uh, thank you. Can I ask the members of the public leaving in the gallery to do so quietly, as the Parliament is still in session, we're on to the next item of business, and that is a member's business debate on motion 16544, in the name of Alexander Stewart, on Community Pharmacy Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak in buttons now? And I, I call on Alexander Stewart to open the debate. Mr Stewart, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am delighted and grateful for the privilege of being able to open my members' business debate in recognition of the work of Community Pharmacy Scotland, or CPS. And I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to guests from CPS who are joining us in the public gallery. Matt Bartley, Director of Operations and Public Affairs, Officer Caroline Rooks. This is a highly significant debate as CPS is the organisation which represents community pharmacy contract owners in every aspect of their lives. CPS is the voice of these healthcare professionals uh, and they deliver pharmaceutical care to people at their communities right across Scotland. CPS is empowered to represent the owners of Scotland's 1,257 community pharmacists and they are there to negotiate on behalf and with the Scottish Government. This negotiation would normally cover all matters in terms of service contracts, NHS ability and also the services they provide. CPS works on the development of a new pharmaceutical care service ensuring that the framework exists to allow owners of Scotland's community pharmacists to deliver these services. These contracts put the care of the individual right at the centre, Deputy Presiding Officer, which focus on the pharmaceutical care and improving clinical outcomes for everyone. Deputy Presiding Officer, community pharmacy contractors and their employee pharmacists are playing an integral role and a very increasingly important role in maximising the therapeutic outcomes and improvements for medical safety and medical care. Community pharmacy is indeed at the heart of every community. Community pharmacy work at the front line at healthcare in cities, towns, villages, right across Scotland. They are involved in dispensing medicines and offering patients advice and practical help with healthcare and well-being. It plays an important part in the drive to ensure that health professionals provide the service to meet the treatments that care requires and they are done right across the country. Recently, by way of a kind invitation and also as my result of supporting community pharmacies, I had the opportunity to visit one within my own region, uh, and that was Bannerman's Pharmacy in Dumblain. It was able, I was able to see at the first-hand experience uh, that this truly excellent service and the variety of well-structured uh, and private contractors that are providing uh, within that facility and what they can do and achieve. Services like Pharmacy First which was an initiative rolled out in 2017 to enable pharmacists to access treatment. And they have been taking on more medical and more clinical rules, and that is vitally important because the monitoring, as they already are doing, of asthma and diabetes and other medical conditions is well reviewed, and that, as I say, is a step forward. The scheme aims to improve patient access to GP appointments and encourage those with certain minor ailments to use the pharmacy as treatment rather than making an appointment at the surgery or, in some cases, people attending an A&E. Community pharmacy itself carries out consultations with patients and provides advice and treatment under locally agreed patient group directions. They stipulate which medicines can be prescribed and patients under uh, and circumstances can be supported. And I'm very pleased to say that Forth Valley NHS, uh, which looks after part of my region, uh, was piloted for this excellent service. It also operates a more advanced version of a nationwide service. However, community pharmacists also face challenging times, Deputy Presiding Officer. Unfortunately, there is a shortage of uh, qualified technicians and pharmacists across Scotland. And a new GP contract has enabled services for pharmacists that can be employed within a GP clinic. Uh, or within a GP directive and also there is the opportunity for region health boards to have that facility and that is to be welcomed because that does once again spread the load and give individuals the opportunity uh, to participate. It could be argued that new service could provide a great deal of benefit to the day-to-day -day running of GP clinics. It also gives GPs time uh, and ensures that they exist and give the opportunity for a huge number of new posts to be created. But that has also uh, come up with some issues because it's not a finite number of trained individuals that we have. In my opinion, and in the opinion of CPS, the issues have arisen due to the new services being implemented without impact on other healthcare professionals being taken into account. And also, there requires to be much more consultation 
And to this end, there will now be a comprehensive workforce survey being undertaken by NES, uh, NHS Education for Scotland, which will be published shortly. And this will quantify the extent of this rather concerning uh, de development. In addition to this, Deputy Presiding Officer, pharmacists are unable to administer flu vaccines for NHS, despite being highly qualified and able to do so. And in the view of CPS, it means that Scotland's hardworking GP services are coming under even greater pressure uh, to battle with the balance uh, going forward. The pharmacists maintain that allowing them to help administer the flu jabs would help significantly in getting closer to the targets. Uh, levels that have been set for vulnerable population and we know that the elderly pregnant women and people with specific conditions require that vaccination last year the number of people suffering through doubled from the previous year our vaccines rates in Scotland fall well short of the World Health Organization's targets and we've never managed to achieve a vaccine uh, rate more than 61 percent of the at-risk adults under the age of 65. So as I alluded to earlier, when we have 1,257 pharmacists across the area, they are open six days a week, so they could do so much more to support and assist us. I really think that we need to look at legislation because uh, south of the border, 1.7 million uh, flu jab vaccines were given out between September and January last year. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, Community Pharmacy Scotland provides a truly excellent range of patient care for within privately owned and businesses run. Uh, and I commend and congratulate for all the work they are doing. They also offer so much more, and they could offer so much more uh, to our communities if they were uh, given that opportunity of cost savings uh, for the NHS. And that's what we all want to see. We want to see the, the NHS providing the services, but also doing it collaboratively with other individuals and supporting. Uh, so I think that if they didn't have their hands tied, they may be able to do so much more to support uh, us going forward. So I wish uh, CPS continued success, and I look forward to seeing uh, them go from strength to strength, Deputy Wrangles, because that's exactly exactly what we should be seeing in our communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Stewart. Open debate. Speeches four minutes. I call Joan McAlpine to be followed by Miles Briggs. Ms McAlpine, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And uh, can I congratulate Alexander Stewart on securing this important debate, which I'm delighted to speak in on the importance of Scottish community pharmacies. I really welcome the opportunity to praise the work that pharmacists around Scotland do to support not only those who live and work in their local areas, but also GPs and other healthcare providers. Indeed, Scotland's hardworking community pharmacists who are independent contractors who supply pharmaceutical services to NHS Scotland play a vital role in helping to alleviate pressures on local doctors' practices and in supporting members of the community to access advice and guidance on health problems and medications before a doctor's appointment is necessary. The Scottish Government, I know, has a vision of providing more care closer to people's homes. And with 1,257 pharmacies all over Scotland, community pharmacies are, more, are the most accessible primary care provider and play a vital role in helping the Government to meet this ambition, particularly through innovative programmes like the Minor Ailments Service, which is an NHS service allowing people to be assessed by a pharmacist and given advice, treatment or an onward referral as appropriate. This service, which is presently available to children, students aged under 19 and people aged 65 plus, has been very well received. <coughs> NHS Dumfries and Galloway in my south of Scotland area serves a population of over 148,000, but within a large geographical area of over 2,400 square miles. So Dufferys and Galloway stretches from Langham in the east to Dromore in the west and from Kirkconnell and Carsfern in the north down to Sandy Hills on the Solway coast and Gretna at the border. The health board employs 4,500 staff, excluding GPs and dentists, and with such a large area being serviced by one main hospital, the pressure on local GP surgeries is high and the need to alleviate this strain is a role which pharmacists play an integral part. Community Pharmacy Scotland, the recognised body which represents uh, Scotland's community pharmacists, have published research highlighting the success of the Minor Ailments Service and showing that 60% of those who use the service said it saved them from making an appointment to see the GP. And CPS are also working with the Scottish Government on an extension of the Minor Ailments Service, which aims to launch in April 2020, and that expanded service will be free to all people registered with a Scottish GP. 
The existing Pharmacy First programme will be merged with the minor ailment service to help increase the breadth of conditions which pharmacists can prescribe for in line with the recommendations set out by CPS. Presently, the Pharmacy First programme allows pharmacists to prescribe for uncomplicated urinary tract infections and in Patagro, as well as localised skin infections, conjunctivitis, thrush and antibiotics um, in a rescue pack for patients with COPD. On top of the minor ailment scheme, uh, the present Pharmacy First programme, community pharmacies play a role in helping members of the communities to battle debilitating addictions and substance abuse problems. Uh, the Boots Pharmacy in Dumfries in my South Scotland region, for example, offers nicotine replacement therapy and supervised methadone supply and the pharmacy also offers emergency contraception. NHS Dumfries and Galloway, um, as I said, stretches a long way uh, through a large geographical area. And uh, I just wanted to pay particular tribute to one, uh, one scheme uh, that they have pioneered, an initiative to train pharmacy staff across the region, which was uh, recognised in uh, the Scottish Pharmacy Awards last year. Uh, the scheme was launched in Wigton Shire three years ago with finance from the Health and Social Care Integrated Fund. Um, and the, at the time, the local prescribing advisor, uh, Amy Robert Robinson, who originated the idea, uh, said that it was well known that we have a need to recruit people to work within the primary care and pharmacy team. And as a result, she joined forces with Whithorn Pharmacy, which is an independent community pharmacy, and pharmacist uh, Fiona McElroy. Uh, and together, um, they worked to ensure that uh, participants could train for 15 hours a week in a community pharmacy to meet the necessary regulations with the remaining time spent with the team in general practice. And they received funding initially to train one pharmacy technician, Elish Bell, uh, who has now qualified. And uh, that's going to be built upon to uh, deliver uh, more uh, trainees with more qualifications. And so I think that was very much deserving of, of its award and shows the innovation in this particular area and the vital work that community pharmacists do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I call Miles Briggs, who will be followed by David Stewart. Thank Mr. You, Briggs, Deputy please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by thanking my colleague, Alexander Stewart, for bringing uh, this important debate on community pharmacies to uh, the Chamber today. Um, he's rapidly getting a reputation for the MSP for members' debates, I think, within our group. But I'd like to also pay tribute to all those uh, working across community pharmacy in Scotland for the vital work they do in assisting and advising patients on health needs and also um, I think it's important to acknowledge Scotland's pharmaceutical sector and industry as well, which is very important to our own economy. Scottish Conservatives launched our pharmacy plan last summer and to look towards enhancing uh, the capabilities of community pharmacy in Scotland. Now, community pharmacists across Scotland already play a vi vital role in supporting local patients, but we believe that they can do more in the future, and we want to empower them to achieve that. And by expanding the services offered by pharmacists, pressures can be taken away and removed from general practice. In my own Lothian region and in other regions across Scotland, as we've already heard, we're seeing a growing demand on our GPs and other primary care services. And many GP practices are already operating closed or restricted lists. And people are facing waiting times of some weeks for routine appointments in many cases to see their doctor. Demand on A&E services continues to grow with people not being able to access um, information without of our services also uh, being reduced. Now, pharmacists are well placed, I believe, to help reduce the ever increasing demands we're seeing on primary care. As has already been mentioned, there's 1,257 pharmacies across Scotland, making community pharmacists the most accessible primary care provider in the country, with a higher concentration of pharmacies in deprived and higher populated areas. Pharmacists are highly trained healthcare professionals, and maximising their knowledge and expertise will, I believe, increase the capacity to deliver more effective primary care to all our communities. And Marie Todd, who uh, was here at the beginning of the uh, debate, often uh, highlighted before she became a minister and had, was the, had the ability to be able to speak out maybe on the Health and Sport Committee, just where she felt uh, community pharmacy could go in the future. And I think that's important. And I hope that voice, I imagine, is heard in government as well. Scottish Conservatives want to see uh, community pharmacies become health hubs, um, which will provide a wide range of services to people in our community. 
As such, we believe community pharmacists should have access to appropriate patient records. And this is something I know the Scottish Government are working on and the Health and Sport Committee have been updated on. In addition, we want to see all community pharmacists having the opportunity to become trained prescribers to allow more common ailments to be treated in an actual pharmacy setting. Our community pharmacies have the potential to assist more patients in more ways, such as taking a lead in travel health services, like at the Barton Pharmacy here in Edinburgh, in my own region, which has an inbuilt travel clinic, um, which is a one-stop shop now uh, for travel-related healthcare needs. Pharmacies could also play a much greater role, as has been mentioned by my colleague Alexander Stewart, in flu uh, prevention and flu vaccination. Providing more community-based opportunities for pharmacists to administer flu vaccinations would also take freshers off GPs and significantly improve rates of people in the community being vaccinated. Taking someone's blood pressure is a service that some pharmacies already provide, but expanding this service and improving knowledge and the availability of these services could, I think, make a real difference um, to heart health here in Scotland. Deputy President Officer, our pharmacists and our pharmacies have a huge expertise and untapped expertise. The knowledge they bring um, is critically important to our wider Scottish NHS. By giving them the ability to assist more patients in more ways, we can both improve patient care and help alleviate the ever-growing pressures on our overstretched general practice services across Scotland. I believe it's time to realise the untapped and unutilised potential of community pharmacies in Scotland. And I hope in a cross-party basis, that is what the Scottish Government will take forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on David Stewart to be followed by Alison Johnson. Mr Stewart, uh, Thank you, President Officer. And could I also congratulate Alexander Stewart for securing this important debate uh, this afternoon. And I felt his speech was comprehensive and well researched. Um, as we've heard, community pharmacies are a vital cog uh, to the NHS in Scotland, increasingly acting as the first point of access to the NHS for many patients, with ailments big and small, long-term, short-term, one-off and chronic. And can I particularly flag up uh, two issues, which I think are not as well known as they should be. Uh, the one, two, three, before you see a GP service, and as we've heard from Joan McAlpine, uh, the minor ailment scheme. I think they're excellent uh, resources. So pharmacists are best known for dispensing medicines and offering patient advice. But they're now taking on more clinical roles, such as management, and monitoring of long-term conditions like asthma and diabetes as well as conducting medicines reviews. They also help people give up smoking, uh, provide drug misuse services and advise on sexual health matters. Uh, I'd like to take a moment, as others have done, uh, to add my thanks and gratitude to the community pharmacists for all their tireless hard work. And I've had uh, recent visits as well. Uh, I went to see La Hardel Pharmacy in Inverness just a couple of Fridays ago um, and a couple of months ago, I went to KG McDonald's uh, excellent Cromwell Street Pharmacy in Stornoway, and a beautiful day it was, Brazilian officer. Uh, and from the excellent uh, briefings I received from Community Pharmacy Scotland, I learned that community pharmacies are the most accessible uh, primary care providers. And we've heard already from the Conservative front bench that there's 1,257 pharmacies all over Scotland, and with a higher concentration of pharmacies uh, in disadvantaged and highly populated areas. Now, as with all areas of NHS, staffing is an issue at the moment, and recruitment and retention of pharmacists is no different. Another uh, pressure that pharmacists are currently facing is the lack of sharing of patient records. Not only do they not have access to patient records from GPs, but any records held by pharmacists are not shared with other pharmacists or GPs. Where's the joined up thinking? Maybe the minister in his wind up could concentrate on this. Uh, working in such a siloed manner could put patients at risk or prevent pharmacists from being able to make informed decisions. In one of my own health boards, NHS Highland, they have been developing innovative pharmacy services to develop high quality pharmaceutical care in more rural settings, from reviewing patient medicines and care homes by telehealth link to providing medication reviews in dispensing practices. The pharmacists play a vital role with the NHS Highland team. And making the availability of medical services more accessible to alleviate pressure from hard-pressed GPs and a &E offering advice and medication, these are things that our community pharmacists can help only if we give them the support they need. And if I could finish, presiding officer, and usually uh, within time, um, could I quote for two, the second day in a row the founder of the NHS, Nye Bevan, who said that no society can legitimately call itself civilised if a sick person is denied medical aid because of lack of means. 
I don't know if you're looking for brownie points for that, Mr. Stewart. We'll think about it. I call Alison Johnson to be followed by Sandra White. Ms. White will be the last speaker in the open debate. Ms. Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome this debate on community pharmacy and thank Alexander Stewart for bringing it to Parliament. Pharmacists play a vital role in delivering health care to Scotland's people, and I'd like to express my appreciation for the work they do. And I'd also like to thank the organisations who provided a briefing for today, and all of those in the Carrick Now Pharmacy who I spent an informative afternoon with, um, a busy staff team who helped me learn more about the important work that they do. It's no surprise, as the Royal Pharmaceutical Society notes in its briefing, that community pharmacy is increasingly becoming the first access point in the NHS for many patients. Community pharmacists are taking on more clinical roles in offering services such as smoking cessation, drug misuse services, sexual health advice, and the minor ailment service, which Community Pharmacy Scotland says saved 60% of those treated from seeing their GP. As members are aware, I recently led a debate on GP recruitment and retention, uh, during which I and my colleague Mark Ruskell spoke about the importance of developing the multidisciplinary team who have the potential to lessen GPs' unsustainable workloads. So I welcome the, the expansion of the community pharmacist role, but we must ensure a significant workforce is in place. Community Pharmacy Scotland says that the new GP contract has resulted in hundreds of pharmacists being recruited to work in GP surgeries, but that this has, recruited, this has created recruitment and retention challenges in their profession, as there hasn't been a corresponding increase in the pharmacy workforce. The Royal Pharmaceutical Society is asking for direct investment in education and training to ensure that there are enough qualified pharmacists and effective workforce planning to ensure long-term sustainability of the profession. And the Scottish Government must heed these calls. It's essential that we don't overburden other health professionals in an effort to help assist Scotland's struggling general practice. Community Pharmacy Scotland has called for improved communication between healthcare providers. Pharmacists can't currently access patient care records, which hinders their ability to prescribe medication and places extra pressure on GPs who are often asked to verify a patient's history. Information sharing across the health service must be urgently improved if the multidisciplinary team is to operate effectively. There is room for more collaborative working between professions, for example, in the promotion of pharmacists as clinical experts in medicine and prescribing. In December 2017, the RCGP ran their Three Before GP campaign, to which David Stewart referred, um, and they referred to the three steps patients should consider bef before booking an appointment with their GP, one of which was seeking advice from a pharmacist. And I urge the Scottish Government to consider running or supporting similar campaigns in future. It may be the case that patients simply wouldn't think to seek medical advice from their pharmacists. So that culture change is required. Um, it's something that we can help facilitate. Pharmacists are also crucial to the integration of health and social care. In a recent report, the Royal Pharmaceutical Society highlighted the need for more pharmaceutical care in care homes. It recommended that care homes have dedicated time from pharmacists and their teams embedded in their service. Scotland's people are living longer, and as a consequence, we have an increasing number of frail elderly patients with complex conditions in care homes. Community pharmacists are well placed to support care homes administering medical care to their residents, and it is essential that there's more collaboration between pharmaceutical and care services in future. The role of the community pharmacist is expanding, and while this will be of prodigious benefit to our health service and patient care, it is vital, presiding officer, that we ensure that a sufficient workforce and appropriate funding is in place to facilitate this development. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Sandra White. Thank you very much, presiding officer. And can I congratulate Alexander Stewart for securing this debate? Uh, community pharmacy is something that I have supported uh, throughout my term as 
an MSP and may I say I've got the 20 year badge on so that's over 20 years and I have really seen you know some changes fantastic changes and I want to thank all of them who work in the, the pharmacies not just my constituents but throughout Scotland which I've visited numerous you know pharmacies there and I think the work that they do is absolutely fantastic I agree with everything that everyone has said all of the speakers minor ailments etc etc and there's one that I, I really want to reiterate, which has came up from Dave Stewart, Alison Johnson in particular, is about the access to patient records. Now, I know it's really difficult to, to do that, particularly when you get GD, GDPR. That's another aspect of it also. However, it really would be helpful with some form of joined up thinking in that, uh, particularly even if it's just emergency care summary in that aspect. But I want to go into another part of community pharmacy, which is not necessarily the medical part of it, and some of it is, but when you go into a community pharmacy, it's a real community hub. Uh, people come from all age groups in and out. Community pharmacies create the bubble packs, which then they go to home delivery. And uh, the last community pharmacy I visited in Argyle Street just a couple of weeks ago in my constituency, they were talking about having to put a cap on these bubble packs because of the costs involved. So that's something else that we need to look at. Plus the fact if you're doing the bubble packs, which is a great benefit for people who are elderly or some, some other form of infirmity, uh, basically it means you have to employ someone else as well. So it cre creates employment, but there is a cap going on there as well. But while speaking to the people in the community pharmacy, uh, as I said, they're very involved in the local community. You get to a situation where if people don't turn up, to pick up their prescription or if they go to deliver the prescription and they can't get in to the house, they know there's something wrong. So it's not just the medical side of it as well. It's looking after the elderly in the community, people who are infirm too. And they have such lots of community knowledge and knowledge about the people who come in and out of their, their, their uh, community pharmacy. And I think they do an absolutely fantastic job. In the last couple of minutes that I've got left, I wanted to mention the fact about the I think Alison Johnson mentioned about the care homes. It was only two weeks ago that I hosted an event about pharmacies into care homes. I also raised it as I'm on the health committee. I raised this in the health committee also. And uh, I just want to say that uh, thankfully we are doing an uh, inquiry into uh, you know, care homes and we are looking at this particular document which has been produced by the Royal Pharmaceutical Society that has now been lodged with the Health Committee and we will be looking at it also. So it's not just, as I said, all about medicine. It's about caring for a community, being able to access people's records, hopefully, in the community from doctors, but it's much, much more than that. Uh, just want to say thank you very much, President Officer, for being able to speak. Thank you very much for all the interesting contributions. I now call on Joe Fitzpatrick to close for the Government Minister, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm going to start by adding my congratulations to Alexander Stewart for securing this, this debate and uh, for the contributions um, across the, the Chamber. Um, I welcome this motion not just because Community Pharmacy Scotland is an important stakeholder in our healthcare system, but the pivotal contribution its members make to the multidisciplinary team at the heart of primary care, which a number of members have uh, mentioned. With over 1,250 members, Community, community Pharmacy Scotland represents a diverse range of community pharmacies across Scotland, from small independent-owned pharmacies to large retail chains. And I saw firsthand the, the vital role a community pharmacy plays on a visit to Avi Moore during the, the peak winter period early, earlier this year. The pharmacist Gary Buchanan and his team provided a range of NHS pharmaceutical care and advice services, not only to the resident population, but of course, um, an all year round tourist destination. The, the pharmacy team provide pharma care and advice to UK and international visitors to the area too, of course. David Stewart. I'm very grateful for the Minister's visit to my region and I hope he enjoyed the visit to the pharmacist there. Did the pharmacist raise the real problem of, of data and the issue that many members have raised? Uh, why, do, why can we not have patient data going to pharmacists? Minister. So as I'm sure the member would not be surprised, of, of, of course they did, they did raise that as, as, a, as an issue in terms of a barrier, in terms of um, being able to do more that they would like to do. But it was um, impressive speaking to the, the team there about the range of things that they already do. And, 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 and that was absolutely certainly a, an issue um, which they raised. Um, I was going to cover it later, but I'll cover it just now, given that the member has. Um, the important, there's a number of members actually that raised um, 
the, the point of access to records. And as um, I think Miles Briggs mentioned, um, uh, work is progressing on um, access to the appropriate information from patient records that is needed to support community pharmacists in caring for their patient population. So government is working with the Scottish General um, Practitioners Committee on, of the, the BMA uh, to put in place a framework that would allow safe, safe accessing and sharing of electronic health, health information. I think that's an important point and, and clearly it's one that, that people are hearing across Scotland given that it was also raised by Alison Johnson, Sandra White, Miles Briggs and, and um, Mr. Mr Stewart. So I do, I do think it's a, an, an important point. Um, so our, our network of community pharmacies across Scotland play a vital role in providing advice to the local communities about medicine and self-limiting illnesses. Through the acute uh, med medication service, community pharmacists dispense more than 100 million prescriptions items annually with 98% of prescription messages electronically transferred between GPs, practices and community pharmacists. So that's all done alongside delivering key person centre services such as supporting over 750,000 people with stable long-term conditions through the chronic medical services as part of the public health services for um, smoking cessation, um, which I think Joe McAlpine raised, um, and um, emergency contraception providing advice and interventions. Crucially for many people, their community pharmacy is the first port of call for advice and treatment for common um, minor conditions through the minor ailments and pharmacy first services highlighted by Joan McAlpine, Alexander Stewart, uh, David Stewart and Alison Johnson. All of these services help reduce the burden on our busy general practice um, and open up access to primary care, a point that a, a number of members have, have raised. Um, the Chief Pharmaceuticals Officer Strategy, Achieving Excellence in Pharmaceutical Care, underlines this government's recognition of the important role community pharmacy already plays in the provision of NHS pharmaceutical care, providing highly accessible services for people in, uh, both in and out of hours. And we want more people to use their community pharmacy, not only for uh, treating, treatment of self-limiting illnesses and medicine-related matters, but also for ongoing self-management support for people with long-term con conditions. Um, achieving excellence um, also makes um, a commitment to support um, engagement between GP practices and community pharmacies, and that, that data sharing, I think, is, is probably important as, uh, going forward as part, as that, part of that. Um, there is an important role for GP um, practice-based pharmacists, pharmacists to work closely with community pharmacists to ensure seamless care and reduce potential um, medication-related problems and errors. Yes. Miles Briggs. I thank the Minister for taking this intervention. Alison Johnson touched upon this point in her speech around workforce planning and the fact that the GP contract will see pharmacists going into a GP setting. What future proofing are we having to make sure that this isn't robbing Peter to pay Paul um, and actually we have a proper uh, pharmacy strategy within the workforce plan? Minister. So, um, Scottish Government provides um, specific funding, £416,000, to support community pharmacists to, to understand um, some, of that, some of that work. Um, but in, need, in, in recognition of the need for us to um, have robust baseline data around the number of pharmacists and, and pharmacy technicians working across the network, last year, in partnership with CPS and NHS Education Scotland, um, undertook NHS on Education Scotland undertook the first national community pharmacy workforce study to gain a better understanding of the numbers and skills mix ac across. So hopefully that will, will make sure that, that, that we, we have the right um, set of skills going forward. Um, trying to pick up on a number of the points um, that were raised. The Cabinet um, Secretary and I are keen to see the positive partnership um, that we have with um, CPS continue and will continue to work closely in collaboration towards delivering um, our programme for government commitments. The programme for government includes two specific commitments relating to community pharmacy, a redesign of the minor ailment and, co and common condition service raised by others earlier and a refresh of the chronic medication services and work has already started on the chronic medication services and will strengthen and refresh the service and relaunch this uh, relaunched that this year as the Medicines Care and Review Service, improving how pharmacies provide personalised care for people with long-term conditions um, on long-term medication. 
and preparatory work is already underway to introduce a redesigned minor ailment and common condition service um, available from April 2020 to all patients registered with a GP in Scotland. That will bring together the existing minor ailments and pharmacy first services that members have raised, gradually um, extending the range of conditions that can be treated by community pharmacists, including um, some common conditions that would normally require GP um, prescription, further reducing the burden on our GP practices. Alexander Stewart mentioned vaccination, and so I want to say a little bit about vaccination, our, our vaccination transformation programme. So that there, there is no doubt that community pharmacy will contribute to the delivery of um, the vaccination programme. The programme supports NHS boards and health and social care partnerships to design solutions for delivering vaccinations in a way that best suits their needs. NHS boards are to be um, encouraged to consider the potential of different parts of a, their multidisciplinary team to ensure that patients receive, receive the right care at the right place at the right time. And that's why vaccination solu solutions must not only focus on community pharmacies. Um, ensuring that our pharmacy teams are delivering high quality core pharmaceutical care services um, is the focus of our priorities and we we'll continue to discuss these with um, um, Community uh, Pharmacy Scotland. Um, Alison Johnson and Sandra White both mentioned um, um, care homes and I think Alison Johnson particularly mentioned the recent contribution um, from the Royal Pharma Pharmaceutical Society on support that community pharmacists provide to patients in care homes. Um, our Achieving excellence in pharmaceutical care strategy contains the commitment to improve the pharmaceutical care of residents in care homes as well as people being cared for um, in their own homes and work obviously has to continue there working with the integrated joint boards to identify what, how that approach will go forward but I think it's a very important point. Um, in summary, presiding officer, I'd like to recognise and welcome the contribution of Community Pharmacy, Pharmacy Scotland and their members to pharmacy services in Scotland and the wider health healthcare system and I'm very pleased to support the motion today. Thank you. And thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.